Oh, hello. Welcome to another Emlyn dumpster fire um, from my temporary place once again. And I keep looking at myself instead of the camera, but hello. <laughs> I believe they fixed the algorithm for a bit, so I'm allowed to say shit this early on in the video. I don't know. I guess we'll see. <laughs> I think I should be able to say welcome to another MLM shit show again as an intro, but I'm honestly too scared because they changed these rules left, right, and center. And as someone who is pre-recording content due to being away a lot of the time, which again, I'm creation. You probably know that if you've been watching me for a while and I'm working fully remote. What I do is I spend about three months every year um, in Croatia. And while I'm home, I don't want to do anything outside of my work, you know, obviously to have time to hang out with my family and friends. So I usually just pre-record for those months that I'm going to be away, which is why I had so much content as well. I was pre-recording just before the flood, but you all guys know that I don't have to repeat myself. That's done and dusted in the past by now. But yeah, today we have a little bit of a trigger warning. Today, this hun is just going to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, she's going to talk about missing person. There's going to be mentions of one person unaliving themselves and things like that, um, mental health issues. So if you're sensitive to any of those topics, I would definitely advise you to skip this video. But I thought it was important to watch this. This was sent to me by one of former Zaya reps, which I, if you're watching, I appreciate you. Thank you for sending all the content to me about Zaya. It's just very concerning with the way she spoke about these personal things and referring while referring to her Zaya biz. Um, so this is classic good example of how these Huns are just trained and taught to not have any boundaries, to just put it all out there for the whole world to see um, alongside advertising your biz. So that's what we're going to do today. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, big shout out to all my channel members. As always, I appreciate you and everyone else who's watching. You know it means the world to me and there's a free way that you can support my channel if you want. That's by liking, subscribing. I don't know why I'm doing this. We have everything set up on the kitchen table because there's no room anywhere else. So I have my work here, my personal laptop just behind my work laptop and then he has his own a laptop right next to me. Yeah, that's a free way to support me just by liking, subscribing, if you're not subscribed and yeah let's just put a little disclaimer in here and let's get into this shit show i should at least be able to say let's get into this shit show after a few minutes i washed my hair today and it kind of looks greasy i don't know why but let's read this first i have had a few comments from zaya reps that were sent to me and this one's from melissa melissa if you're watching thank you for sending this on i know this was a while ago but we're gonna read it out now so she says, a former Zaya rep here. I'm so here for this. Never went into debt with Zaya, but was over halfway through the comp plan. Had a team of 80 women under me and it was miserable. Of course. The time and money freedom is the biggest lie. The further you go, the more time it takes from you. Painful life lesson on never ignoring statistics. I will never wear Zaya again and I refuse to support a business model that hurts women. True, that's a very good decision. We try not to support MLMs either. Contrary to some former MLM reps, I don't feel badly for the women on my team who stayed in or are responsible for them. They see exactly what goes on and they choose blind ignorance to justify their their behaviors. P.S. Their activewear is nowhere near the quality brands like what? I've never heard of this one with the V. I'm not even gonna try to. It's probably Worry, right? Or something like that. Oh my god, Eric Worry? Or Little Lemon. It's a Target Activewear brand. Equi equi oh my god. Equivalent on a generous day. Equivalent. I can't say that. Equivalent on a generous day. Thank you, Melissa, again, for sharing that. That's what I've been talking about this whole time. I've never worn Zaya myself, but I've read many, many reviews. Unless they're a rep, most of the people that tried Zaya are actually going to say, or a former rep as well, is going to say that they are not a luxurious brand. As much as they like to claim they are, they really aren't. I feel like it's getting very dark outside. I hope my neighbors can't see me through this window. It's a pretty big window. I probably just look like a really busy professional lady to them, considering I have three monitors around me and I'm just kind of like going from one laptop to another. <laughs> Who knows what they think? Okay, so this is a little bit of the info that I got about the lady that we're gonna watch this video from, the rep that made this video. So the former rep tells me that she is, she got in Zaya early. 
this top rep. She's one of the top reps in Zaya. And the reason why she is a top rep is because she got early. And as we like to mention at any chance we get, really, the few ways that you can become successful in an MLM is if you join early, if you have a big following on social media that you can recruit into your team and rank up quicker, or if you have, let's say, one of the tippy top reps in Zaya, I've been told that she has her own gym. So in the gym lobby, she is selling. So obviously she's inventory loading and she's selling those Zaya clothes in the lobby of her gym. So those are the only few ways that you can get successful. So obviously this lady that we're going to watch today, she got successful just because she joined early. Okay, so she told me she mentions about a point system for earning a trip. And since she doesn't say how points are earned, I will clarify. From what I remember, points are earned based on personal volume retail sales, hostess parties closed, recruiting people onto their team, helping people rank advance by encouraging them to recruit in addition to parties and sale. From what I remember, there were a lot of us stuck at the bottom and not for our lack of trying. So thank you for sharing this. If you're watching, obviously, I'm going to keep you anonymous as always. And she also said, yeah, trigger warnings are grief. Unaliving someone loss. S.A. Human. Oh, my God. Look at that traffic, right? I'm just trying to not get flagged. Financial struggles as well. So those are some of the trigger warnings for the video today. So this is a moment where you should bounce out because we're about to watch this video. So it's also about a half an hour long and I've been already recording for a while. So let's just jump into it. To share with you tonight, my heart, my journey as an entrepreneur um, and how it's been crazy. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I'm just really excited to share with you how we've been able to build success and create it despite tragedy and hardships that our family has faced. And we'll, we'll get into that. But, um, so who am I, if this is the first time we're meeting in this virtual screen, hello, um, I am 29 years old. I live in Utah. I am a mom. I've got two little girls, a five-year-old and a three-year-old, and they are so fun. I can't believe I'm out of baby stage. Like, what the heck? Time flies. Um, I'm married. My husband is David, and um, I'm an introvert. <laughs> I had never done any type of video like this before I started Zaya, so um, it helped me grow a lot. You gotta love how all of the Huns, MLM Huns, are always introverts. They're always introverts. Why do they like to say this? When did it become cool to be an introvert, I wonder? Um, I love the outdoors and adventuring. I love iced coffee and I love sleep. Like... I'm not a night owl or an early bird. I just love sleep. Like I will be cozy. Like my bed just is the best place ever. So anyway, that's just a little bit about me. <laughs> um, but okay, so the real reason you're here to hear about um, Zaya and my entrepreneurship journey and how Zaya plays a role in that. So um, I would say a little bit of background. I've always had a little bit of like an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, my dad owns his own business. Um, also, Dave's dad owns his own business. And I liked the idea of being able to work for myself. So anyway, I just didn't know how. <laughs> and I got married um, almost nine years ago. Ooh, yay. <laughs> and me and my husband are very like futuristic minded people. And you know, we're just oddballs. And we had this dream where we wanted to work together one day. Um, it doesn't work for every couple, but <laughs> it was just a dream of ours since day one. Uh, we just thought it'd be like the coolest thing. And so starting out in our like careers in married life, um, I remember he got a job at the mall working to sell cell phones. He has a background of sales. And I got a job at the mall working at a makeup counter and we'd like pass each other on lunch breaks and, or on breaks and then have lunch together. And like that was the starting point of working together. Um, <laughs> but 
Anyway, we tried lots of businesses and failed at lots of businesses. Um, but that's how you learn and grow, right? That's how one thing leads to the next. So we tried a photography business together. I tried like an Etsy shop where I like made holistic um, like product and almost caught my kitchen on fire trying to make homemade deodorant. <laughs> So that ended that career. <laughs> I realized I wasn't cut out for that. Um, and I tried a few different direct sales companies. Um, my mom and um, some other family members are part of another company and they did it um, in the early 2000s. And so I was pretty young at the time when they were doing it. So I didn't really understand it. I just like heard the weird like the stigma around MLM and I was like yeah whatever like I never gave it much thought um <laughs> but anyway um so as I'm trying these different avenues trying to feel like what feels right or what I like and nothing's working out um me and my husband, like I said, we love the outdoors. We love adventuring, hiking, rock climbing, mountain biking. And um, when I had my my first daughter, the reason why I'm going like this is because <laughs> I would put her on my back. Dave would wear her on his back too. We had a little carrier and we'd go on hikes and bring her. And it was like the best thing ever. It's one of my favorite things to do as a family is go hiking and bring our little ones out in nature. And I'll never forget we were out hiking one that sounds like something i'm gonna be doing when i have kids i don't know if i'm ever going to be capable of like giving up hiking and being in nature so i feel like i'm gonna be bringing my babies along as well one day one day currently i can't even think about having kids because i don't even have a place to live technically i mean just on paper <laughs> i do have a place to stay obviously and we're also very lucky i know i have been bitching a lot on my instagram and if you want to hear and see more from me and what's going on in my life my personal life follow me over there because i've been bitching a lot in the beginning when the flood happened and when we had to move out from the apartment it was obviously very stressful but then i kind of tried to you know switch my mindset a little bit and try to see stuff from the positive side like we're all healthy you know i probably could have got unalived in that apartment because the water went all over our dehumidifier that was turned on it was so close to going all all the way onto the sockets the cables my workspace it was you know close enough called obviously all of my feelings were valid but still yeah, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to comment on anything because she's just talking about herself and her personal life. But yeah. Day. And we again got in our like dreaming mentality, thinking in the future. And, you know, we're like, what do we want to do? We're just in that discovering stage, um, trying to figure out life, right? The never ending process. And I just remember being so like stumped when we were just talking. I'm like, what do I love to do? And I'm like, I like this, I like hiking. <laughs> I'm like, babe, how do we get paid to do this? And that was adventure and hike. And we're like, man, we're gonna find the wood. We're gonna do it. So I feel like that was a big turning point where I manifested desire into my life without knowing it. <laughs> um, so anyway, now, <laughs> When my eyes were really opened up to the opportunity that direct sales had to offer was actually knowing somebody in the industry that was around my age. <laughs> Cause like I said, my mom was in it, some family members, and I, I just never gave it much thought. I thought it was weird, but, <laughs> um, my, um, husband's roommate's wife got into another company and they were struggling with like infertility issues and they needed a way to get funds to help fund like their fertility journey to have babies. And we were following along their journey and I was watching. Okay. Okay, lady. Oh my God. No. If you need extra money for anything. I don't like how she just casually mentioned that they got money for fertility treatments through the MLM biz. How many people actually manage to do that? Up to 99% of people in MLMs, according to the FTC, never make any profit. And because Zaya doesn't have an income disclosure statement, 
what are you waiting for, Zaya? Um, I'm going to link all the FTC articles down below that may be helpful to you, but up to 99% of people never make any profit. And not just in Zaya. Obviously, we don't have an income disclosure statement specifically for Zaya, but across all multi-level marketing companies, their income disclosure statement, their statistics are pretty, pretty simple, pretty, pretty similar. So it's safe to say that most people that join Zaya probably never make any profit either. So MLM biz is not going to fund anything for you, okay? You're not going to make any profit in it. So if, if you need any income, this is not the solution. This is not the answer. And I remember having this conversation with her and this thing she was doing, she told me she was making $10,000 a month doing it by selling this product online on her phone. And I was like, excuse me, what? Like 10, like one zero, 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 zero. Like you're making that. And she's like, yeah, like we're like, God is providing, like we are going to be able to fund like our, our fertility. God is not providing an MLM to you. God was against any type of scams and cheating and stuff like that. So God would not point you towards something where you're earning money based on hard work of other people who are below you. It, God would not bless you with you being successful in a product-based pyramid scheme or what really resembles one, in my opinion. I think you really don't have to be a big religious person to have this kind of logic, why would God want you to scam his other followers? It makes no sense. God did not send Zaya to you or any other MLM company for that matter. Journey and I got chills and I was like, whoa, like if she could do it, why couldn't I do it? Like if there, there's actual money to be made in that type of model, okay. <laughs> I tried that company and failed. <laughs> so I just needed to find a product that I loved and a brand that she tried that company and she failed because she joined when it was already saturated right I don't know what type of company that was she didn't mention but it's safe to guess she joined and it was too late she didn't have following on social media then she found Zaya which was at their beginnings it was only founded recently she joined early enough and now she's successful so she got lucky by joining early. That's why she's successful. I stood by, right? That I was passionate about and that I connected with. And so how did I find Zaya, right? So um, <laughs> like I said, I love to adventure. I love the outdoors. After I had my first daughter, I started exercising for the first time in my life, like consistently. Um, and I just fell in love with the way it made me feel like mentally it was like me time you know not so much i mean yeah the physical benefits are nice but like it was just like a release the endorphins it just made me a happier person and um i created a fitness instagram account just to help keep me accountable because i was doing these like online guides um workout guides and i was connecting to women all over and i was like man i don't even know these people they don't live close to me, but we're connecting. <laughs> we're doing these workouts together. We're cheering each other on. And um, that's actually how I found Zaya. I was scrolling the gram one day and I saw this cute clothing line um, by a weird name that I didn't know how to pronounce. I was like, Zia, what is that? <laughs> I saw me too. That was exactly how I was pronouncing. I was saying Zia throughout my very first video about Zaya. And there was a few reps in the comment section that were obviously very upset with me for talking about Zaya. And they kept saying, oh, you don't even know how to pronounce the name. Why are you bashing the company? I was like, that doesn't even matter. Shouldn't stop anyone from making videos about something if it's wrong and if they want to raise awareness about something. But that's funny because it's funny to see that a lot of the people are confused by how. To I mean, come on. A lot of these MLMs have such weird names. I don't know why they do that. That was new. Um, and I'm like, OK. I need to look into this <laughs> because I saw that it was um, a way that you could rep for them. And it was this model that I didn't really understand, but it was direct sales. And I, was, I remembered that friend that made serious money doing what she did. And I was like, oh, this is actually a product I love. Maybe I could partner with them and just run with it. And, and so this was in 2017. And the reason why, I mean, 
like I said, I was continually looking for a way to work for myself because <laughs> I liked the idea of direct sales, like being able to work for myself. Um, and I wanted to be home. So at this time in 2017, um, a little back, more background, um, I had gotten pregnant with my second daughter. My husband had actually um, also had some um, job loss. And so I was like, man, how can I help our family financially, right? So that was a, a motivator to like keep looking for avenues to make money, but I wanted to be home. And, and so anyway, I'm pregnant. I'm in my third trimester when I found this, this activewear brand. And so in my mind, I was like, hey, I'm gearing up for my second postpartum fitness journey. That's gonna motivate me to wear cute clothes. I, I had never had a pair of high quality leggings before, um, but I'm like, people, like Melissa said earlier, when I read her comment that she left on my video, they are not high quality. Zaya is not a luxurious high quality brand for what they are. In my opinion, they are just an overpriced, your average, but not much effort put into quality company. And also they do put out new releases every single week. So of course, it's just impossible for them to keep the quality good and keep the sizing consistent if they keep trying to put out new releases every single week. That's just insane. But of course, what does that do? That motivates Zaya reps and distributors to keep buying these new releases so that they can advertise it on social media. Like high quality clothes, though, maybe it's awesome. Um, so I just trusted it. And um, I never tried Zaya before. And I decided to dive in. I was like, okay, hey, let's go. If I can make a little bit of money on the side, great. Um, but it there was something that I could have never planned, right? So um, anyway, I had just became a rep. We're gearing up for baby number two. We're feeling pretty good. My husband actually um, got this new job and um, took on a big position. Like it was a big deal and a big risk. We're pretty big risk takers. That's probably why we've like failed at a bit, bunch of stuff, but we keep trying new things. Um, but anyway, we took a risk with this other company for him where he would give up his salary, but he would get profits. Like it was, it had a high reward, right? And we're like, everything was adding up where it would be like, it seemed like an awesome decision, right? He takes the job. I'm here, you know, we're like, we're feeling good. Four days later, after he accepted that position, his brother went missing, which turned our world upside down. Um, and this is a brother that was just older than him. He was 30 years old. He was a dad to a little seven month old baby. He had a wife um, and the Swensons, my husband's family, like they are so golden. All the siblings are so close. Like they have a relationship that's so admirable. And he goes missing. Our life goes on hold. And three weeks, about three weeks goes by. And we get the heart-wrenching news that he had passed away. We had found his body. We still don't have answers. Um, but we were searching when, you know, you just never stop. And I am about to pop at the time, like um, nine months pregnant and we're out in the heat running search parties. And um, I thought I was gonna go into preterm labor many times just through all the stress. I had lots of contractions. I had to go get like those stress tests, like make sure baby's not gonna come. Um, but this was a time I saw God's hand in my life. Um, we had his funeral and the sun set when we laid his body to rest. And then I went into labor that very night. Long story short, our baby came very fast. <laughs> like I was not planning on a natural delivery, but it happened. But the sun rose with life. And it was very symbolic to me of hope. And um, was a little piece of light during a very dark time. 
but so now we have a little newborn and a toddler. Uh, my girls are exactly two years apart um, by a day. When I say exactly, like their birthdays are a day apart. That was not planned. <laughs> and now we go back home. Um, but remember that job my husband took on um, and accepted right before all that happened? Yeah, that tanked. And we suffered a lot of financial stress. Um, and if you are going through financial stress, like we have been there and my heart goes out to you when your bank account goes into the negative and you get all those charges from your bank <laughs> going into the negative and you're not sure how you're going to pay your bills and um, just the stress that it puts on you. That was really, really hard. And then just the like, transition to two kids like if you're going through that i am sending you love that is a lot any time of any type of change is just a lot and i was experiencing postpartum depression and then also i don't know why god threw this at me at the same time but during that time i also faced childhood um sexual abuse that happened to me for the first time as an adult and if you know anyone that has experienced that, there is something where you can like literally block it from your brain as a protective mechanism. And then you have tendencies or like anxiety or whatever things that like manifest, but you're not really sure why. And anyway, a series of events happened where it finally came forward where I was able to open up about it for the first time. And wow, that was really painful. Um, and caused a lot of drama, <laughs> but I finally was able to start embarking on my healing journey um, with that, which was needed. Um, so, so needed, even though it was so hard and so painful to face as a doll and I had so much anger and everything, but to start on that journey and I don't know why that all happened at once and then our little Olivia, our baby got pneumonia and she was hospitalized and we could have lost her. Um, and then my husband lost his other job. <laughs> but wait, there was this activewear brand in the background, right? That's what we had started talking about in this video. Um, my journey with Zaya was not fast. It wasn't like me Woo! Like instant success and everything. There was a. Let's just calm through that a little bit. Obviously, all the tragedy that happened in this woman's life is terrible. From what happened to her husband's brother, that's. I can't imagine like going through something like that. It's very sad. It's very heartbreaking. But. On the other side, with their financial losses and stuff. I mean, if you have a child and you have another child on the way, and from what it seems like, I'm, I may, I'm misremembering things now, but she didn't have a steady job herself. And then he accepted an opportunity where he would give up his salary for a possibility of a bigger profit, right? <laughs> to me, that's just a reckless irresponsible financial decision. What the hell do I know? I have a regular job. I put savings away every month when I can. I'm not investing and I never have, which is probably a mistake, sure, but I don't have enough money to invest as well, to save and invest. I chose my priorities, right? So I don't know anything about this. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor, but to me, as a regular ass person, um, if I had a toddler and if I wasn't working anymore myself, if I didn't have regular paychecks from my job, and if I had another baby on the way, and if my boyfriend tells me, listen, I got this opportunity, we might earn a ton of money, but... That's not guaranteed and I have to give up my steady paycheck. I would tell him I would not do that. In our current situation, I would not risk. I would not make that risk, which is something that they obviously did. And it backfired, which you did it knowing your situation. Obviously, it's still stressful and it happens to people. But 
in my opinion, it was just a very reckless decision, financial decision to make, especially when, like she said, they had a baby on the way. They already had a small baby. Babies are expensive. So I don't know. Let me know down below what you think about this. Would you do that? Would you make that financial decision if you were in the situation that she was in? Don't mean to judge anyone. Just my two cents. But again, They've been through so much and it's absolutely heartbreaking, obviously. But the fact that she's going to go into that, I mean, hell, her title is creating success despite tragedy. So she's purposely talking about the bad stuff that happened to her in their lives and everything so that she can twist it all and be like, oh, but I have Zaya and I'm so rich now thanks to Zaya, which is not OK. I mean, lady... In my opinion, you're just scamming a lot of people out of money. You're earning money because they're losing money. According to the FTC, like I said earlier, up to 99% of people don't make any profit in MLMs. And this is not because 99% of people are lazy or don't have the right mindset or are just not working hard enough. It wouldn't be that high of a percentage because a lot of the people work hard. A lot of the people would do a lot of work and whatever it takes to get some good money out of it. It's just that the business model is set up for them to fail. So. A lot that hit us and it I could have quit so many times. I mean, I had valid reasons. We had a lot going on um, and there was this thing, right? These, these clothes I couldn't even really think about. Um, but what got me to stay was the people that were there. Like these people that were within corporate and also that were doing Zaya, that were reps that were supporting us during our trials. They didn't know me, but then just like the simple, like reach outs to me, seeing how we're doing, um, sending their love to us during our time, like during those times, like that got me through. That's what I needed. I mean, I wasn't making awesome money or anything. It was like 20 bucks here and there, 50 bucks. And I'm like, Ooh, okay, we're struggling financially so bad. I'm not making all this money, but it was the community starting out that got me to stay. And a big turning point was, um, I went to a summit with Zaya, which is like the I'd like a conference again if you want a fitness community i think i've talked about this before in my previous previous videos i started posting fitness content when i went on my fitness journey seriously back in 2020 when i wanted to get healthier and stronger um i connected with a lot of people on social media with a lot of women who are so very supportive even in my youtube journey as well outside of the fitness journey you don't need to join an mlm to get a community of like-minded people mlms are not the solution for that you can get all of that for free by either i don't know getting a hobby or going to the gym or i don't know doing whatever just even just on social media, like an online community, you can do all of that. You don't need to join an MLM and pay a lot of money um, for their products in order to get this community. And I, I went with my little baby. <laughs> and so I almost didn't go because I'm like, oh my God, baby, this is weird. I'm going to meet up with like these people I don't know, like I didn't know what to expect. I was scared. I'm like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm very introverted and I can be like, like shy. My nose is running because I'm like, because I got all emotional. But I went to the summit and made friends. And I'm like, oh, I have friends. <laughs> and Zaya gave me like this opportunity to talk to other adults. If you are a mom with young kids, you know the feeling. You're like, I just need to talk to another adult. So that's what it was starting out for me. I had a huge mindset shift um, at the end of 2017, beginning of 2018. Zaya released their very first travel incentive, which I had a travel bug in me, but I never had the means to do it, <laughs> right? I'm like, someday I'm gonna travel. Um, but I saw that this company offered travel incentives that you could earn and they, they launched their first trip and how you earned it was getting points of doing certain things. And I was like, oh, okay, if I just do this, this, and this, that adds up to this many points, then I can go. Okay, I'm going to do it. And I like put my head down and got to work and I earned that trip. 
I was to Las Vegas <laughs> and I earned a trip to, um, for me and my husband. I got to bring my husband along and we're like, ooh, this is so cool. This is awesome. Like this could be something, right? But I'm still not making like awesome money or anything, but it was like, great. Like that was awesome. And so I began this mindset shift of treating my business like an, a business of um, putting time aside to work it right? Um, like I always wanted to do, work for myself. And it was in the spring of 2018, I'll never forget, where I made a paycheck that was just over $2,000, which was more than I was making before working full-time on my feet at Nordstrom's, <laughs> working like around, I mean, a lot of hours. And I was like, babe, this is something. Like, I did this from home with my newborn in my arms, my toddler with me, and just feeling that weight of that financial weight being lifted from our family because we had struggled. Okay, you can earn that kind of money just by doing a corporate job. You can also have a corporate job that's fully remote, so you can still have your kids around. Like if you go into chat or email support, customer support type of thing, $2,000 uh, after tax. Well, obviously, I don't know what it is like in America or other countries. I'm speaking for Ireland. That's a pretty average paycheck for that kind of job. Obviously, a lot of the jobs do like to underpay people. When I started in my current company, I was severely, severely underpaid, but I did like the job. I did like my team and everything. And I spoke up for myself and I fought to get a bigger salary, and now I have a pretty average salary that's, it's okay. I mean, Ireland is still quite expensive, but it's a good salary now. So even if you start out by being underpaid, a lot of, well, a lot of the employers won't care, but a lot of them are going to care and are going to try to help you, especially we're in the inflation, we're recovering from the pandemic. So a lot of the people got good raises within my company as well, just so that because the employers care enough to help us have a normal life with the new prices and new new life expenses. Which again, I'm aware that not every employer would do that for people, but I'm just saying you don't have to join an MLM in hopes that you're going to be able to be home with your kids and earn that kind of money. 99% of people never get to earn that kind of money. You can get this in a corporate remote job. And after the pandemic, so many companies out there decided to switch ways and become remote company or they just have an option for you to work remotely if you wish. A lot of them are hybrid, things like that. There's a lot of options that a corporate nine to five job can offer you now. And you don't have to work crazy overtime hours. You can work here 40 hours a week and that's fine as well. Like if you're at home, it doesn't really matter. As someone who works remotely for over a year now, almost two years by the time this video is out, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. You can get all of that in a corporate remote job. You don't have to join an MLM. And also corporate job is going to pay you regularly, which is something that MLM is not going to do. Your paychecks are not regular. Even when you rank up, you can still lose your rank and you can still lose all the money that you've been getting up until that point. It's not a consistent paycheck. It's not secure at all. It's so hard financially. And just seeing a little bit of light there of, wow, that is life changing right there. And so I just continued to do what I was doing, treating my business like a business, um, time passed, fast forward, and I started making six figures with this activewear brand. And I was like, what? Me at home? What is happening? What is happening? This, these are clothes. Like, what is this? And so me and my husband re-evaluated, we sat down and he, you know, was working this other job and we took another risk, us risk takers, right? That bites us in the butt sometimes, but sometimes there's high reward, right? We decided to take another risk and he left his job so that we could dive in more fully to this activewear brand that we were doing. Um, in my opinion, again, this is just another bad financial decision. Like she said, okay, she likes risks, they like financial risk. But then don't complain when it doesn't pan out and when you have financial issues because you fully were aware that you're making this risk and that it may not end well for you. 
I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being nitpicky and not seeing, not having enough empathy for this woman. But to me, it's just something that I would never do, especially if I have small kids. I would not make these kind of risks because I, I, I have to feed those kids. I have to be able to afford them like at least one steady paycheck, I think would do okay. Like why can't one person risk and then the other one have a steady paycheck? So if this doesn't pan out, you still have the regular paycheck that can support you and your family. Why both of them have to go into risks and make these, what in my opinion, bad financial decisions, I don't know. So he could give it more energy so he could help out with the kids and help with laundry so I could give it more, more time, right? Um, and fast forward more, we have become a top income earner with this brand. Um, we have paid off all of our debt, which we had so much. Um, and that feels so free because of, I just, my heart goes out to you if you're struggling with financial stresses because we've been there. Um, we, um, we're able to fulfill that dream of working together, right? We said in the beginning, that was always a dream of ours since we um, first got married. And so that's probably why we decided to take that risk because it was something always in the back of our mind. Um, and we lived in, in an RV we <laughs> and traveled the Pacific West, West Coast um, with our girls and our dog and adventured and hiked and that filled my cup and that fulfilled the dream of getting paid to adventure, right? From our hike where I would wear the clothes, we'd snap pictures, like content, like that's working. I could work on the go, which I loved being in an RV, crazy. Okay, but who wants to work while they're hiking? Like, come on, take some time for yourself. Where's your me time then? If you have to work on your holidays and if you have to work while you're hiking, where's the fun in that? Who wants that? That's not a pro. That's not a good thing about MLMs. Stop trying to pretend that it's as if that's such a great thing that MLMs, oh, you can work on your holidays. No one wants to work on their holidays. Um, road trip <laughs> and um, fulfilled that why. And I will never forget that hike um, that manifested that moment. And now we are building our dream mountain home in Utah. And it, it's crazy. We're supposed to break ground at the end of this month or next month. Like it's happening. We're getting all, all of our permits with the city. And I just, I, I can't believe it. And um, another big part that um, has been so life-changing or just like a important part to us is because of the time freedom that this um, opportunity has allowed us to have is my husband was able last year to partner up with an organization that fights human trafficking called CERT, S-E-R-T. And a little bit of background there. So CERT has been around for around 17 years. Um, um, doing what they do and when Dave's brother went missing there was connections where somebody contacted him because they just help m missing persons cases mostly in the trafficking um, section but um, occasionally if somebody goes missing you know if they feel called to a case they will help and so this organization organization cert came and helped search for Dave's brother. So that's how we met them. And they brought so much light to our family during that dark time. Even though it was not, it did not end up how we had hoped. They brought so much light and peace to our family. And we did not know them, had no clue. And they just dropped everything to help our family. So fast forward, um, about three years later, <laughs> um, Dave felt so called to partner with that organization. It's a cause that he feels very called towards and he became an operator where he gets to now donate his time to help on these operations to um, fight human trafficking. Um, and he's actually on an op right now. And I'm so grateful for the time freedom that Zaya has made that possible for him um, as we work together with Zaya, but also where he can fulfill things where he um, feels passionate about too. So 
Anyway, just to wrap up, that's a little bit about my story. <laughs> I love this brand so much. I've been in it about three and a half years and to say it's changed mine and my family's life is an understatement. Even in the beginning, that community when I wasn't making money, like that was life changing of just having that connection. And there's so many parts of this business that is so invaluable, like the personal development side of it as well, where I have had a hard time with speech, which you might notice in this video, I'm kind of awkward. Um, I never done a live video before Zaya, but it's helped me step into my own, find myself, who I am, get to know myself. And I love that. I love that personal development side so much. And now I get to help others grow with this. I see Zaya changing people's lives every day now. There's so much success within Zaya and there is no shortage of success with Zaya. And it gives me chills because, you know, I just think back of when we were in discovery stage of what we wanted to do with our lives, right? We had these big dreams of what we wanted, but how do you get there, right? And we found the answer, like an actual solution to achieve those dreams, right? And it is this amazing opportunity of direct sales and getting paid to wear leggings. <laughs> it's an actual solution. You're not getting paid to wear leggings, okay? You're getting paid selling these leggings and recruiting people into your team, right? Sorry, there's a cat meowing outside of my window. I'm trying to befriend the cat. You're not getting paid just to wear these leggings. A lot more goes into that MLM biz. And it, this is just misleading, in my opinion, just trying to present it this way. What else did I want to say? Oh yeah, direct selling. AKA multi-level marketing is not a great opportunity. 99% uh, of people never make any profit. So it's not an amazing opportunity. It was an amazing opportunity for you in Zaya specifically because you joined early enough. But like you said before, you already joined a different direct selling biz where you failed because it was already oversaturated. It was too late. Solution is trusting it. So it's so much more than just clothes. I mean, the clothes are awesome and that's perk, but it's a vehicle to accomplish those gene, those dreams, those dreams. Um, and I love seeing people succeed in this business and there's so much success. Like if you love to travel, pack your bags because Zaya does too. And they just announced that their most recent incentive trip to Cancun this year, 900 people earned it. Like 900 plus their plus one. So that's 1800 people going like Zaya's taking over Cancun. <laughs> so cool. And it's only growing from there. Like there is no shortage. Like there's so much success. I want to see you succeed with whatever dreams that you have. And I'm excited to see how, you know, Zaya could play a role in, in that, in your journey. So my advice to you, as you're looking at this opportunity, as you're looking at, you know, whatever it may be, what's going on in your life, if you are going through trials or hardships, especially like the last year we all went through together, um, they don't define you. They don't have to hold you back. Oftentimes a storm bec comes before a rainbow, right? Oftentimes when we're about to do something that we feel called to do something good, there will be there will be resistance. There will be something trying to stop us. <laughs> don't let it stop you. Keep going. Um, and I don't know why hardships happen. They suck really bad. <laughs> but just trust in a power higher than you that there is purpose in it. And keep holding on. Trust the process. And next, I would say if you feel called to something, like just dive in. There's never a perfect time for anything. If my story is any example of that, <laughs> never a perfect time, right? So if you feel called to it, dive in, just start. Sometimes starting is the hardest part. And so um, just dive in. So contact the rep that invited you here. Okay, well, 
that was that was a lot of messy stuff wasn't there i feel like mentioning all of that tragedy and everything bad that happened for them was really not necessary like how does that have anything to do with her Biz? it didn't really affect each other in any kind of way her business, her Zaya business set off after all the tragedies happened, right? But they still kept making financial decisions. So they were still suffering financially until she got successful in Zaya. But like we said earlier, and like the former rep confirmed before in her message to me, this lady joined early enough. And that's the only reason why she's successful in Zaya. I don't know what was the point of sharing all of this but let me know down below what you thought about this i've been recording for a while and my phone's overheating so i'm gonna wrap that up here thanks so much for watching especially if you made it this far you're a trooper a big shout out to all my channel members as always appreciate you guys and if you want to support me in a free way please don't forget to click that like and subscribe button and i apparently can't talk anymore i will see you all in the next one bye